Hello, traveler. Have you ever heard of a moment of dreams? Oh, that sounds like some kind of sweet drink. <laughs> I'm afraid not. It's the name of an event we started to hold regularly. Dreams have become quite the hot topic in Sumeru, and many people are excited to share the dreams they've seen at night. The same goes for me. The last time I dreamed was when I was but a little child, so I can't help but feel excited and nostalgic about dreaming again. Oh, right. Everyone's able to dream again now. Yes. We organized an event to give everyone with new dreams a platform to freely share their experiences. And thus our event, A Moment of Dreams, was born. So, it's kind of like a fireside chat. You could say that. We hear all sorts of wild and fabulous stories every day. Really, why not have a listen for yourselves? Yeah, but to us, dreaming is as normal as breathing. Wait, but if there are free drinks and snacks involved, then Paima might consider it. Oh, really? So you mean... You've already seen many dreams? Mm-hmm. But no need to get so excited. It's really nothing special. No, no, no. We need experienced participants like you to share your experiences with dreaming. Please allow me to address you two as dream experts. Oh, expert? <laughs> Paimon kind of likes it. Now you seem interested. <laughs> Please, follow me to the meeting place. It won't take much of your time. Rest assured, you'll find all the drinks and snacks you'd like there. Wow, how accommodating. <laughs> Sign us up. Uh, but wait, uh, Paimon's getting ahead of herself again. We should see what the Traveler thinks first. Uh, why aren't you saying anything? <laughs> Be dream experts! <laughs> Very good. Follow me then. Do you know what's the most important part of being an expert? <clears throat> well, I suppose it must be accumulating knowledge and sharing your experiences? The dream expert! Oh, okay. Sorry to interrupt, everyone. We finally have some real dream experts joining us. Esteemed experts, this way, please. Ahem. Now, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them. They must be dream experts from another land. Great! Oh, I have a question. Me first! Me first! No rush. Everyone, please line up and ask in an orderly fashion. Wow. Paimon didn't expect them to be so enthusiastic. My question is simple. My everyday life is very difficult, so I would like to become a slime in my dreams. How can I do that? kind of dream before, so <laughs> she knows a thing or two. The first time, Paimon became an animal slime. Paimon was shot by an adventurer's arrow and flew in the sky all night long. The second time, Paimon became a dendro slime. A group of kids thought Paimon was a radish and pulled out all the grass on her head. Oh, it was super painful. The third time, Paimon became a cryo slime. In the end, Paimon was captured by a chef and turned into a smoothie. And the fourth time, Paimon became a powerful geo slime and went to take revenge on the forest boar that used to bully Paimon. But then the boar showed up with all of its relatives and Paimon lost again. <laughs> Wait, why did all of your dreams end so tragically? Because slimes are monsters, even though they look cute, they usually cause trouble and end up getting killed by adventurers. Things don't tend to end well for monsters. Believe Paimon. I suppose you're right. They are monsters, after all. I just want to experience a different life, but it seems that becoming a monster would be even worse than my current life. Hmm. Maybe I'd be happier if I became just a regular finch. Or fish. 
Looks like being an expert is way easier than Paimon imagined. Next! Oh, it's my turn. <sighs> Esteemed expert, I want to know what posture I should sleep in so I can have the same dream as the one I had last night. supposed to be helping. Um, first, why don't you tell Paimon about the dream you want to have again? <laughs> oh, it's quite ordinary. I sat and chatted with my wife on a sunny day, listening to the breeze blowing through the valley. Why don't you just find your wife and talk with her? There's no need to wait for a dream. Well, uh, unfortunately, she passed away. Paimon shouldn't have assumed anything. No, it's fine. I didn't make that clear. I just want a chance to see her again. Yeah, it's not really about posture. What you think about right before falling asleep is probably way more important. Oh, is that all I have to do? Think about it! If you're the one thinking about her, and you're the one that'll be dreaming about her, then it'll be easier to connect your thoughts and dreams. You do have a point. I'll give it a try tonight. Thanks for your wise advice. Oh, my turn, my turn. Hum, I want to know the name of the plant in my dream. I want to bring the souvenir box to my room into my dream. I dreamt of a raven flying over the wasteland last night. Does that have any kind of special meaning? Hey, no rush! One at a time! <sighs> Their questions were way too difficult. We don't actually know anything more than they do. We're just more experienced dreamers, that's all. You do have a point. It's more rewarding to explore and contemplate the meaning of a question than to focus on the answer itself. Right now, these people are like wanderers who've starved for three days and three nights and are desperate to replenish their energy. Any explanation they get now is like pure sustenance to them, no matter how good the explanation really is. Oh, and now that Paimon has said that, you know who comes to mind? Bingo! If she was here, she'd probably be making some similar analogy. Unfortunately, she's super busy right now and may not have time for gatherings like this. Dear experts, we have another guest who would like to consult you. Uh, but you saw how we answered all the questions just now. We're not really all that knowledgeable. Ah, but this guest is rather special. My question is, why didn't you immediately tell me about such an interesting place? Huh? Nahida? How did you get here? Interesting events like a moment of dreams don't happen every day after all. No matter how busy things are, I'd still set aside some time to check it out. Anyway, I really didn't expect to meet you here. Oh, right! If there's anyone that understands dreams, it's you! You should be able to help us answer all these questions! You're not wrong. Alright, they can ask me anything. The more interesting, the better. Uh, uh... Huh? What's wrong? You were off so excited a minute ago. Why the sudden hesitation? Even so, it's not like I look super intimidating or anything, right? And in terms of reputation and renown, you've also done many great things in Sumeru, yet they didn't even flinch at you. Alas, the interesting questions have all vanished in an instant. It appears I'm the one spoiling the fun here. I'll see myself out. Oh, that's not true, Nahida. 
I don't want to get in the way of the original purpose of a moment of dreams. Which is to let people gather here and freely share their marvelous dreams. Now the atmosphere here is like water poured into a container. The water is more secure and settled, but it has lost its free-flowing nature from the river. I just want it to be another drop in the water, not the cold and restrictive container. She's sulking. Um, hey! It's alright, everyone! No need to be shy! The Dendro Archon is really nice, so please just go ahead and ask! Otherwise, she'll leave! Uh, alright. I'll give it a try. Oh, it's the slime guy! Hey, drop the nicknames, would ya? Besides, I don't want to become a slime anymore. Maybe a finch or fish is more suitable for me. I see. So you want to become a small animal in your dreams, right? Why do you think that sounds good to you? I guess I just want to experience something different. My everyday life is nothing but the same. The sky is right above me and the ocean just over the horizon, yet I remain caged in a life of monotony. So you want to experience something new in your dreams? Mm, sorry, I'm getting a little confused. Why don't you seek out some new experiences in real life? Because if I don't work, I won't have any mora. Sure, I don't want to be out hammering nails and cutting wood every day, but I have aging parents and young children to take care of. By the time this all dawned on me, I realized that my life has already been filled to the brim by trifling matters, and I have no more freedom. But if that's the case, then even if you became a flying bird or swimming fish, you will still be hammering nails and cutting wood in your dreams. The reason is you've already been caged. It doesn't matter what your physical body turns into, your mind will still be stuck in the same predicament. Really? That sounds pretty terrible. Then what should I do? I don't know everything that you're going through, but how about replacing your hammer? Huh? Replacing my hammer? That's right. Having worked for such a long time, you of all people must know what makes a good hammer. Well, of course. A good hammer needs to be heavy enough to drive the nail in with just a couple taps. And the handle has to have a good grip to it, not too smooth. Come to think of it, I haven't replaced my current hammer in quite some time. You should replace it. Then decorate the handle with something you like. Maybe some ornaments, fur, or hard leather wrapping. Then write the names of your children on it. <sighs> that makes sense. I think it'd give me a good boost of energy at work. A new sense of adventure often begins with the little things in life. You'll need to become a bird in the air or a fish in the sea. You only need to do your best in life, and all those things you cherish will become your source of happiness. Yes. Yes, I get it now. This is a real eye-opener for me. I'll go and pick out a new hammer right away. No. I should make one of my own. Thank you, Great Dendro Archon. That's our Nahida. Only you would know how to get right to the heart of the problem. Actually, I didn't really understand the problem. Huh? I gave him that advice because I once saw a worker doing the same thing. Whenever he became tired, he would look at some names on the handle of his tool. After a moment, he'd start to smile. It really surprised me at the time. My guess is that the names on the handle were of important people to him. Mm-hmm. After observation, I know this kind of behavior motivates people. But why is that? Is it because of excitement, anticipation, or helplessness? I really don't know. And even if I could know what's going through his mind, it's still difficult to fully grasp his feelings. Oh, Paimon gets what you mean? Huh. Paimon had no idea it takes you so much effort to understand these kinds of things. 
<laughs> That's why I was a bit nervous just now. But luckily, seeing his happy face in the end reassured me that I didn't say anything wrong. Don't mind me though. This is just my way of learning. Hey! Don't forget about Paimon! Everyone knows that Paimon's also super skilled at reading people's feelings. Thanks, you too. That makes me feel a lot better. Let's move on to the next question, shall we? I already asked the experts my question earlier, but I wanted to hear the Dendro Archon's response too. What should I do if I want to see my deceased wife in my dreams every night? Hmm, longing for the deceased. Even if you keep reliving those beautiful memories, it will only highlight the emptiness in your real life. If your wife were still alive, she certainly wouldn't want to see you like this, would she? No. I suppose not. But our time together in my dreams is not just reliving our past together. I don't know. Maybe it's because I miss her too much. But it's really as if she had come back to life in my dreams. She even remembers each and every dream. After I wake up and then continue dreaming again later, we can pick up our conversation right where we last left off. That's really amazing. Statistically speaking, continuous dreams are extremely rare. It's almost as if my wife has obtained a second life in my dreams. But the more vivid she appears, the emptier I feel and the more painful it is when I wake up. I don't know whether to call it a blessing or a curse. Maybe all of this is rooted in your deep longing for her. Were there any unresolved matters or regrets between the two of you? I don't know. I suppose my biggest regret is that I couldn't spend the rest of my life with her. I really felt like I was ready to move on. I wouldn't be so hesitant now if it weren't for these hyper-realistic dreams I've been having. Huh. You know, they say that whatever's on your mind is what goes into your dreams. But dreams are, and will forever be, just dreams. We are people living in the real world. It's not good to be overly obsessed with dreams. All it'll do is fill up your mind and eat away at your thoughts. Yes, I know. That's why I'm also a little disappointed in myself. I still need to take care of our child. And it's probably not good to let her see me in such a state. <sighs> anyway, thanks for your advice, Great Dendro Archon. I'm a little worried about him. I hope he can find a way to cheer up soon. I think I can handle things from here. You don't need to stay here if you find it boring. You're here to have a good time after all. Are you feeling any better now? Yes. I think the Dendro Archon made a really good point. I need to stop dwelling on my wife like this and move on with my life. Now that I think about it, my wife and I always meet at a familiar place in my dreams. I know where that place exists in reality, but it's a bit far and dangerous. I don't dare to go there on my own. But at the same time, I feel as if I should go and have a look anyway. Perhaps I'll be able to move on once I see that there's nothing there. Otherwise, I'll keep on feeling like everything is covered in a haze. Like I'm only half awake. Once I can stop dreaming about that place, I'll probably be able to get my life back together. Actually, you two are adventurers, right? If it's okay with you, could you escort me to that place? Yeah, it might also be a good chance for us to unwind. Even if you can't see your wife there, taking in some nice scenery will definitely help cheer you up. 
Yeah. I hope so, too. All right. Go ahead and get yourself ready, then. interesting place without telling me again? Huh? Wait! Aren't you supposed to be answering questions? I just finished. And they really got a lot out of it. So many interesting and novel thoughts. Anyway, it looks like you're going somewhere. Why don't you take me with you? Oh, there's no need to trouble you, Great Dendro Archon. I imagine you must have many other important things to deal with. No need to stand on ceremony. Besides, I wouldn't have asked to come along if I didn't have a good reason. I wanted to use this opportunity to discuss with you some things that are puzzling me right now. Huh. I didn't know the great Dendro Archon could become puzzled, too. <laughs> I'm not all that different from you, you know. All right, let's go. We can talk on the way. go for a leisurely stroll. Huh. Do adventurers often go to places like this? Huh. I guess so. So, this is where you always meet your wife in your dreams? Yes, for the most part. Our place is on the summit, just up ahead. When I saw her in my dreams, we didn't do anything but talk about ordinary, mundane topics. I'd tell her about our daughter, Hydar, and she always listened intently. She would also reminisce about the past with me, telling me interesting stories and cracking jokes. It feels like no matter how long we may chat, it's never enough. Sometimes, it's the little things in life that matter the most. This is the part I'm a little puzzled about. I am very familiar with dreams, and normally, they lack logic and continuity. But you said she could remember what you had told her before, right? That's right. She always listened to me carefully in real life, and now, she's doing the same in my dreams. She always surprises me with some details from our lives in the real world. The fact that she can remember such things makes me feel like she's alive. Whoa. That's pretty weird. Well, dreams are kind of weird to begin with. However, the problem is that his dreams have too much structure and continuity. Most dreams are far more fragile than you can imagine. For example, a loud noise outside your window in the real world could cause your dream self to get loaded into and fired out of a big cannon. Another example, if you're thirsty in the real world, then you might find yourself trudging through a desert in your dream. But the appearance of your wife seems unusually stable and unaffected by any outside interference. Statistically, this should be extremely rare. I don't understand it either. But I have no reason to suspect or reject these dreams. They're too beautiful. But I still want to figure out the how and the why. These kind of dreams are novel to me as well. That's why I want to have a look at the scene your dreams have been taking place at. Let's go. Just think of it as a nice little hike to the top of the mountain. Well, he really wasn't kidding. This place definitely isn't safe. No matter. We'll just finish them quickly. Huh? Are you going to fight too, Nahida? Of course. This is all part of our little trip. The scenery here is amazing! It also seems like a great spot for eating snacks and taking a nap. Paima wouldn't mind spending some time here every day either. <sighs> I've yet to see anything strange about this place. I do not plan to deny the power of longing. Such an intense but unquantifiable emotion could indeed have the power to organize dreams. His wife must be a really amazing person. 
Huh? Wait, where'd he go? Oh, so you are waiting for me here? Well, guess what? I've brought someone amazing with me today. When the Dendro Archon said she wanted to come with me, I could hardly believe it. I'll bring Hydar once I'm more familiar with the way here. She's been telling me that she really misses you. Huh? What's wrong with him? There's nobody there! Wait, Minar. Don't go that way. It's dangerous. Uh-oh! He's gonna fall! Catch him! <sighs> Luckily he didn't fall. But what was all that rambling about? He also looks like he's passed out. He's in the dream now. What he said just now matches almost perfectly with the dreams he described to us earlier. Oh, so he fell asleep and started to have the same dream? I find it a little strange as well, but we mustn't awaken someone while they're sleepwalking. All we can do is sit here and wait. Uh, huh? Minar. Where's Minar? Oh, good! You're finally awake! Uh, what happened? Huh? Sleepwalking? Oh, right. It was all just a dream. The moment I reached the summit, I saw my wife, Minar, sitting there and walked over to her. After I introduced her to you, she seemed a little flustered and started walking away. I told her to stop because of the cliff, and then she seemed to suddenly disappear. A strong wind started to blow around me and the sky grew dark. When I realized something wasn't right, I woke up. That sounds pretty wild. Maybe you were just too tired. I don't think so. I slept a lot yesterday, and I don't feel very sleepy now. Maybe we've affected the way his subconscious constructs dreams by following him here. Anyway, all that matters is that you woke up safe and sound. I think I know what happened now. I'm sorry. If it weren't for you, I would have fallen. Let's head back now. Don't come back to this place again for the time being. Oh, okay. Nahida, what's on your mind? Paimon's a little worried now. We still don't have enough evidence to work off of, so it's hard to draw any reliable conclusions yet. But I'm concerned that Ilmon's case may not be unique to him. Oh, right! Come to think of it, there were lots of people from the event who had vivid memories of their dreams. Right. And not only at a moment of dreams, there may be people like this all across Sumeru. We need to understand what's happening and the rate of its development as soon as possible. Then there's no time to lose! Let's head back! Stop standing there, Ilmon! Let's go! Oh, you're back already! How'd it go? We have an emergency on our hands. Please notify everyone here that while they can continue to discuss their dreams, they mustn't try to visit or recreate the locations and scenes that they have been experiencing in them. What? Uh, uh, Alright, if that's the wish of the great Dendro Archon. But could you at least tell me what happened? You all look so serious. I see. I never knew even a dream could be so dangerous. Don't worry. I'll be sure to notify all the event participants and inform the other staff members about what has happened. Using the event registration list, I should be able to contact more people that were interested in dreams and warn them about the situation. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Let me confirm if all of today's participants are still here. Atta has already left. It seemed that he was on his way to make a hammer, so that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, wait a second. Where's Katya? Has anyone seen Katya? Has she already left? 
Oh, I, I think she already left. She said there was somewhere she wanted to go. Oh no. Did she want to look for the place from her dreams too? Can you tell us where she went? Yes, she did briefly mention it. Somewhere near... Chatracum Cave. Alright, thank you. We'll go look for her. Please help us tell the others not to do anything reckless. Sure thing. Oh, who would have known things would have turned out like this? Look! She's sitting over there! And surrounded by monsters! Come on, let's rescue her! Hey! She seems to be in the same condition as Ilmon earlier! Yes, but luckily she hasn't been injured or jolted awake yet. Let's carefully move her somewhere safer. See you tomorrow, Professor Aisha. Hmm. Huh? Why? Why am I back here again? Dreaming? But what about Professor Aisha? Oh, I see. It was all just a dream. Well, that makes sense. After all, it hasn't changed a single bit. Huh? What's it? Nearly 20 years, and it still hasn't bloomed. <sighs> Does it have something to do with your dream? Please, tell us what you mean. Ah, sorry. I'm still feeling a little groggy. Please give me a moment here. <sighs> <sighs> All right, where to start? Right, this plant. So, Professor Aisha gave me this plant just before she left. She was a good friend of my parents and my first real tutor. She was also an outstanding Amorta researcher. In addition to her extraordinary academic talents, she was also skilled in combat and would accept lots of work from the Adventurers Guild. Oh, so you mean she's left on an adventure? Yes. When I was about ten years old, she told me that she must go look for the secrets of the Abyss, and that she would be gone for a long time. I grabbed hold of her and wouldn't let go. I didn't know what the Abyss was. I just knew that she was like family to me. She hugged me, and we cried for some time until I fell asleep. When I woke up, I was already back home. She still decided to leave, but had left behind a letter for me saying that I was the person she cared for most in this world. She claimed that investigating the Abyss could help more ordinary people protect the people and things they care about. She had obtained some important evidence during her past adventures. If she didn't set off right away, she might miss the perfect opportunity. Guess Ad Astra Abyssosk isn't just a slogan. She left a seed in the letter, telling me that if it sprouted and bloomed, then she'd come back no matter what sort of risky situation she was in. She said she looked forward to seeing me all grown up. But strangely, I've tried watering it, feeding it, everything I could think of, but I've never been able to get it to bloom. I even went to ask the Amorta researchers, and they couldn't explain it either. May I have a look at the plant? Of course. I was hoping the great Dendro Archon could help me solve this problem. Let me see. Hmm. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> huh? We've never seen that look on Nahida's face before. Uh... She... she looks a little unwell. Um, hold on, we'll be right back. What's wrong, Nita? You can't tell what's wrong with the plant either? No... I immediately understood what's happening with that plant. 
I'm just not sure if I should say it. This plant is not known to the academic world. It's a new species that her teacher managed to cultivate by some special means. Judging by its features, I can tell from the moment it sprouted it'll never be able to bloom. It, it can't be! It means that this Professor Aisha she keeps mentioning might have foreseen the danger and was prepared to never return. From my experience observing people, she would undoubtedly regard this as a brutal revelation. When forced to confront such brutal truths, people may break down into tears, talk nonsense, or lose their tempers. I know she has to face the truth, but at the same time, I don't want to hurt her. Tell me, what should I do? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, seems like you've already got a good idea of the feelings she might experience. But wouldn't that mean I'm just pushing it all on you? What if she just gets angry at you instead? It's alright. There are all kinds of people, and the examples you observed are just the most extreme cases. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Let's go back and tell her. Huh? It'll never bloom? But... How is that possible? If a plant is unable to bloom, doesn't that mean it can't reproduce either? All that's left for it to do is slowly wither away. Are you saying... she never intended to return? Seriously? So everything she said was a lie? But she meant well. Since the separation was inevitable, she hoped that you would be able to come to grips with such a cruel parting a little later in life. Yeah, her love, care, and attention to you, all those warm moments were real. I guess she had hoped that you could understand and respect her choice after learning the truth. I see. Sorry, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but it's just... Just so much to take in. The dreams are so beautiful. Yet reality is heartlessly cold. I really thought she had come back. I had so much to tell her. These dreams may not be as pure and beautiful as they seem. Some kind of power may be exploiting your feelings. <sighs> really? Yes. So with that in mind, until our investigation is completed, please return to the event and ignore any further temptations from your dreams. I see. Thank you for rescuing me. And sorry for the trouble. Luckily, the plant didn't get hurt either. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anything left to remember her by. Thanks, Traveler and Paimon. She seems to have finally accepted the truth, but I think she'll still need a long time to come to terms with her feelings. I saw her waver the moment you mentioned love. It was almost like a gentle ring, arriving just in time to put out a fire that was about to spread. It's because people have something called empathy. Empathy? Hmm, I see. This is valuable knowledge indeed. By the way, you said there may be something that's trying to exploit their feelings. Any idea what that might be? Yes. What's common between Ilman and Katia's cases is that they've both lost someone dear to them. And now, they get to meet the people they cherish in their dreams again, and the people feel more real than anything a regular dream could hope to create. Instead of interpreting it as a result of their longing, I have to consider a more antagonistic explanation. Someone is taking advantage of their longing. Yeah, they're just causing these people to dream. What are they after? This is exactly what we need to investigate. Anyway, let's pay another visit to a moment of dreams. 
they have a bad feeling about all this. I hope things haven't gotten any worse. We're back! How's everything here? Uh, I am so sorry, Great Dendro Archon. We're still trying to figure out how to explain the whole thing to everyone. Because of your warning, we've brought dreamers here even if they were completely unaware of the danger. But some of them have already fallen asleep, and they haven't woken up for a long time. I fear there's nothing we can do about it. A moment of dreams is just a small interest group. We don't have enough staff members to handle this. Just as I expected. It seems my guess was correct. It's the Dendro Archon! She's back! Uh, what happened? Why have we been gathered here? Many of you here have been experiencing some beautiful dreams. But I'm sorry to tell you that based on our investigation, there's some kind of conspiracy behind them. Before we learn the truth, please don't try to recreate the scenes in your dreams. Whatever you see, don't be tempted by them. Huh? But... I don't think it's a big deal. Aren't we just dreaming? It's not like dreams will have an effect on others. We've already met two people who ran off to the countryside alone and got caught in dangerous situations by falling to the temptations in their dreams. That's right! These aren't just dreams! It's serious! Alright, I get it, I get it. So does that mean once we have some conclusive results from the investigation, we can continue to enjoy these dreams? Yeah, I still want to visit my sister in my dreams. I'm sorry if what I'm about to say sounds a little offensive, Great Dendro Archon, but... We had a discussion with the folks who just arrived here. In all of our dreams, we were able to reunite with people who were very close to us. They all seemed as if they were alive again, which makes us reluctant to wake up. Yes, that's also what we've observed in our investigation. So if the results of this investigation would mean an end to those dreams, that'd be quite cruel to us. All of us understand the danger, but perhaps you can't quite understand just how much those people mean to us. I don't think everyone will be on board with the plan to abandon these dreams for good. Before the conclusion of the investigation, they'll at least want to meet the people in their dreams one last time and say goodbye. We've never had such a difficult situation before. It appears that not many people are willing to cooperate. So they still want to return to their dreams despite knowing the danger? That's right. Compared with these sweet and beautiful dreams, our warnings of danger are dull and emotionless. It looks like the situation will inevitably spiral out of control. The more time we waste, the more people will ignore our warnings and return to their alluring dreams. So, what should we do? Seems we have to go into a dream and find out the truth for ourselves. Pedrush. Is there anyone here who's experiencing a marvelous dream right now? Ah, uh, let me think. Uh, yes, this way. Good. Please take us there. This lady refused to heed our warnings and fell asleep here a little earlier. Hmm. She's only asleep and hasn't started sleepwalking. It seems she hasn't sunk too deep into her dream yet. Do we also need to fall asleep if we want to go into her dream? Don't worry about that. I'm Lesser Lord Kusanali after all. Now, don't be nervous. Just close your eyes. Imagine yourselves as waves gradually rolling onto the beach. You slowly wash over the shore and sink into the sand. What's wrong, Traveler? You look a little disoriented. Really? Paimon didn't notice anything. Anyway, seems like we've made it into the dream. I thought we would arrive at some familiar scene, but we seem to have landed in a completely unfamiliar place. 
Whoa, so many giant plants, even in the sky. Amazing. Theoretically, we should have gone straight into Debbie's dream. Things do seem to have gone a bit sideways here. Anyway, let's see if we can find any leads. Huh? A door? Hmm. Wonder where it could lead. Well, it's not like we have any other way to go now. Let's go in and have a look. Familiar? Isn't it Puspa Cafe? Oh! Paimon sees Debbie! She's right over there! Looks like we've come to the right place! These alluring dreams often portray a scene from real life, which concurs with our previous findings. Really? Well, what about that space we were in just now? You can't mean... This is another collective dream? Yes. Given that so many people have been experiencing these beautiful dreams, I would say it's very likely that they're interconnected. Compared to an interconnected dream, independent individual dreams would be much harder to manage and manipulate. Ah, oh, Paimon gets it now! Well, let's go talk with Debbie! Oh, but there are some other people next to her. Uh, are they dreaming too? If this base is exclusive to Debbie's dream, then the others beside her are most likely the people she cherishes. Anyway, we should confirm that first, just to be sure. Huh. How do we do that? Just leave it to me. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Huh? She sounds a little hesitant. I've confirmed that this dream belongs only to Debbie, because I'm unable to hear the thoughts of the other two people with her. So, this is the power of the Dendro Archon? Uh, Paimon had better watch her thoughts from now on. <laughs> don't worry. I don't often use my powers like this. It's rather impolite. Alright. I need to get myself ready. It won't be easy to break it to her, but there's no avoiding it now. The, the Great Dendro Archon! Uh, what brings you here? I, I'm sorry to interrupt your celebration, but... Have you noticed that what's happening here doesn't quite match up with your memories? I... I don't quite understand, Great Dendro Archon. What do you mean? I get it! The Dendro Archon is trying to say that it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that we're able to gather here! Hey, how about a cup of coffee for all of you? My treat. We just returned from a fruitful adventure. Memories? A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? Think carefully. You of all people should know what really happened to them. Are you sure that meeting here and chatting the day away like this isn't just a product of your own wishful thinking? Uh, uh. <sighs> yes. The reports from the Steambird were true. The ship they were on struck a reef and sank. And I never heard from Vasima and Gaspar again. Hey, come on now! What are you talking about, Debbie? Yeah! Trust your memories! Nothing you see here is real! I get it now. This is a dream, isn't it? But since it's my dream, it doesn't matter if this is real or not. I enjoy the way things are here. I no longer have to face the tragedies of real life! These friends mean the world to me. 
Nobody else can understand me like they do. There's nothing wrong with continuing this dream. Is there? I'm worried that if you were to continue dreaming like this, the lines between dreams and reality will gradually become too blurred for you. These dreams will always give you what you want, while reality remains full of pain and difficult situations. If you are not careful, you can get hurt. Don't worry. I still have control. I won't let it go that far. Are you sure? Hey, how about we put all this troublesome stuff aside and get back to our coffee and snacks, hmm? Whether it's just a dream or real life, you should be happy. You can't just brush off something like this! We don't even know how you people got here or where you even came from! <sighs> Sorry. Paimon didn't mean to upset anyone. No, it's alright. I understand that you're just trying to look out for me. It seems that for now, this place is still relatively harmless for you. But I wonder if there's any way to go deeper into the dream. Huh. Now that you mention it, I once heard a strange voice tell me that there's an entrance here. I'm not interested in checking it out at the moment, but maybe I'll go in and have a look later. Okay. Thanks for your help. Just as I expected, we're only on the surface of this dream. Let's go. dreams work. We've left Debbie's dream, but the dream is still continuing onward. I'm not sure where it'll lead us. This dream has the ability to create imaginary people, which is why people are so unwilling to wake up. If it weren't for what we just saw, Paimon might still find that a bit hard to believe. I have a guess. If these dreams are connected, then there should be some sort of order to them. The fact that Debbie was able to realize that she was dreaming means that she is not very deep in the dream yet. But the space we're in has been turned upside down. Do you remember the characteristics of dreams that I mentioned earlier? Oh, right! Dreams are chaotic! That's right! It's possible that we're heading deeper into this dream now, and the deeper we go, the closer we'll get to the essence of the dream. Right! So the answers might be waiting for us deeper in the dream! Yes, and we should get ready for whatever we may encounter. Hmm. It looks like we may need to put something inside there. Appears again as soon as the rain stops. And it's less like a flower, and more like the dendral slime that's trying to keep out of sight. Here we go again! The heat is analogy! Huh? Are we back up here again? Uh, wait. Uh, Paimon's confused. Are we up here or down there? Uh, good thing we didn't fall. <laughs> yes, we did. We just fell upwards. Probably Ilmon's dream. Huh? Why would he start dreaming again? Yes, but it seems that the danger isn't enough to stop him from longing for his wife. Based on what we've learned so far, he must be sleeping more deeply for his dreams to appear here. 
But fortunately, he already knows this from before, so hopefully we'll be able to wake him up. Yuman! Oh, it's you! Incredible! I didn't know you would appear in my dream, too. Did you say dream? Wait, so you know this is a dream? Of course. Such good things rarely happen to me in real life these days. Here, let me introduce everyone. This is Minar, my wife who I mentioned before. And this is our daughter, Hydar. Hello. It's a great honor to meet the Dendro Archon. Whoa, Dad. You know the Dendro Archon? That's amazing! And what's this? <gasps> is it a new toy? No, it's Paimon, not a toy! Ugh. Anyway, now's not the time for that! Nahida, this doesn't seem to add up with what we were expecting! <sighs> You're right. Let me think for a bit here. Oh, right! We didn't see him in a moment of dreams earlier! Paimon thought he'd gone home! Sorry. I just had to make sure that Hydar could get a chance to see her mother. I had gotten pretty familiar with the hike, so I brought Hydar with me. I'm just glad we didn't meet any monsters along the way. Yes, I'm glad too. <laughs> I didn't expect her to grow up so fast. It must have been very hard for him. I regret not being able to fulfill my role as a wife and a mother. No, don't talk like that. Let's leave all that unhappy stuff behind for now. Even if we're in a dream, it's still a blessing that we've been able to reunite in this way. What should we do now? Should we tell him the truth? You can... You can let me break the news. I should be the one to do it. I'm sorry, but... I should tell you that your dream did not create us. We are real people with our own consciousness. Like the last time we met, we are still investigating this dream, and we've already learned some things about it. So you mean... there's something nefarious with this dream as well? Hmm? Ilmon, what's going on? It seems... the reunion of our family is destined to only be temporary. Huh? Is Mom leaving? Maybe... But, in all likelihood, that is indeed how things will end. Oh... No, Mom! You can't leave! I'm afraid I don't quite understand what's going on. Don't worry, Hydar. Mom's not going anywhere. Please, don't cry. Minar doesn't understand any of this. I'm fully aware that this is a dream. So that's why I've never told her the truth, but... Never mind. It's not like I would know what to say. I mean, I don't get any of the complicated stuff. But regardless of whether this dream is good or bad, you're here to resolve it, right? Yes. Then please, let us enjoy this moment for just a while longer. Regardless of whatever caused this dream to come to pass, I feel extremely grateful to have had the chance to reunite with my family. But does this dream really have to disappear? I'm afraid so. Sorry. <sighs> okay. I see. Please, come this way. You can go even deeper into the dream by heading in this direction. I have heard that the further down you go, the more pleasant the dreams become. And the more you want to stay. The answer you're looking for may also be found there. Go ahead. Thank you for helping us. And I'm truly sorry. You're welcome. It's not like I have any say in the matter. I'm just an ordinary person, after all. Who am I to interfere with the work of a god? I'll be right behind you. I should at least let Minar and Hydar know what's going on here. 
Otherwise, my daughter might be mad at her mother after we wake up. We're not doing something... bad, are we, Nahida? That depends on how you define good and bad. It's the same place again! This place is almost like a flight of stairs that connects all the dreams together! But they appear to be getting more and more aggressive. Regular stairs wouldn't try to attack us. Right. Something seems to be off about our theory. Ilmon is clearly aware that he's dreaming, and he's enjoying it. Rather than dreaming on a deeper level, he almost seemed... more awake. I believe we're on the right track, but we just need another explanation. It's not that the dreams are getting deeper, it's the owner's attachment to the dreams that's getting stronger. But you would never mistake dreams for real life, right? Sometimes, Paimon almost wishes her dreams could be real. But it's just a quick thought. It's not long before Paimon's thinking about other things, like sticky honey roast. Listen, we're real beings living in the real world, and that's where our focus should be. This also explains the insubstantiality of our dreams. No matter what they may become, we don't really care. But if we decide to abandon reality and embrace our dreams, then our dreams will become far more substantial. Oh, wait! Paimon's starting to get it now! Your mind will begin to build the dream far more attentively, which in turn will make it feel more real. Do you remember how the Akasha can turn dreams into Nyana energy? Constructing a realistic dream consumes a similar energy. Does that mean there's a host of these dreams here like Milu during the Subzeros festival? If we wake that person up, this collective dream will end, right? Mm-hmm. Most likely. But the collective dream in Sumeru City was created by the Akasha, and now the Akasha has been turned off. This has nothing to do with the Aranara, and humans are not capable of creating a collective dream. Which means... Huh? So, did someone manage to restart the Akasha? Hmm, that's impossible. But they are probably a scholar of the Academia who had a close connection with the Akasha. Even so, how did they manage to do it? And how did they choose the host? Yeah, we haven't gotten to the end yet. Once we know their motive, all the questions will resolve themselves. All the water that used to be here has... turned into rain! Then let's get through here before the water level rises. in this dream. This should be the final destination. Huh? Really? Yeah, these are just ordinary city streets. I have powers related to dreams, so it's usually easy for me to tell who's dreaming and who's created by dreams. I guess only those who have thoroughly accepted this dream will be able to come here. There are so many people here! How can we find the host? Don't worry. I have a way. Hey! Anissa's always so calm. <sighs> I wish I were the same. He's just in an ordinary dream, so it shouldn't be him. Shadia has such good taste. I can never go wrong with her opinion. No, it doesn't seem to be her. 
Who doesn't want a dream to last forever? He's just entered the dream recently. It's definitely not him. However... Who doesn't want it? You know, I've heard that plants grow better if you play music for them. And on that note, it's been a while since I last heard you play. Sorry, I've been a little busy these last couple days. Oh, the Dendro Archon. What a pleasant surprise. Hmm? Oh, welcome, great Dendro Archon. And your companions, too. Welcome. I'm Amira. I run the flower shop here. And this is my husband, Moses. Yes, how may we help you? You already know all about me. There's no need for all the pleasantries. Perhaps I should call you the dream's owner? <laughs> As expected of the Dendro Archon. I'm sorry, Amira. It seems my research has attracted the Dendro Archon's attention. Why don't you go back to the flower shop? I'll come help you a little later. Okay, of course, dear. I'll see you later. It appears that I was too naive to think I could deceive the Dendro Archon in person like this. To avoid looking like too much of a fool, allow me to ask the first question. How well would you say you understand this dream? This dream was built by the Akasha, and it has the power to create imaginary people who no longer exist in the real world. As for you, you found a unique way to become the owner of this dream, going so far as to have even given up the ability to wake up again. Given up? The ability to wake up? <laughs> Impressive! You truly are the embodiment of wisdom. Please, tell me how you were able to arrive at such a conclusion. In return, I'll answer the question you're most curious about. It's simple. Apart from you, this space only consists of real people who are dreaming and imaginary people who are created here. Although you are here and appear no different from the others, I can't sense your dream. How can I wake up a person who's already awake? Fascinating. Since you're the fully awake owner of this dream, it can never collapse from you waking up. Theoretically, this should also give you absolute control over this place. I have to admit, it really doesn't get much better than that. But even knowing all of that, one question remains. How did you do it? Isn't the answer right in front of you, great Dendro Archon? It's because I've dedicated my entire reality to this dream. I uploaded my entire consciousness into the Akasha when it was still running. Actually, this all started because of an accident. My original goal was not about the Akasha or a collective dream. No. You were motivated above all to create a hyper-realistic person. The desire to reconnect with a real loved one is the one shared sentiment between all our dreamers. That's right. However, human models are too complicated. Only the Akasha has a Nyana energy supply powerful enough for me to generate and sustain my models. The Akasha is truly magnificent. If I siphoned a minuscule amount of its energy, nobody would even notice. And even this minuscule amount of energy was already more than enough for my purposes. Even using just crude methods, I was still able to train a fairly realistic person. I named my first work Amira. Huh? You mean the girl we just saw? She and I entered the Academia on the same day. Starting with admission procedures, we bumped into each other six times on just that first day. And because of that one day, we eventually went on to fall in love. We studied, conducted research, and made breakthroughs together. Our rhythm was always in step. I felt like we were two separate bodies that shared the same heart. However, 
Ella's our leader took her from me. Yes, I need more training samples to perfect Amira's personality. I found their details in the Akasha's database. Using the pretext of testing for mental health disorders, I implanted signaling devices in their bodies. This way I could connect them to a network, and Amira could feel their yearning. Little by little, they helped her to grow and develop a warm, human personality. To improve my efficiency and allow myself to focus on nothing but my research, I uploaded my consciousness as well, and became a part of the network. Hmm. So, technically speaking, it's not that you won't wake up, it's that you can't wake up. Yes, because the Akasha was suddenly turned off, I lost all of my Nyana energy. I became imprisoned in the very network I had constructed. At first, I panicked. But, after coming to grips with the situation, I realized that I could restart this world as long as I could find a replacement source of Nyana energy. That means everyone in the network is providing you with Nyana energy! That's all there really is to it. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. I'm just saving them as well as myself. I provide a beautiful dream, and in return, I harvest their Nyana energy as fuel for the dream. They can wake up any time they wish. People need to sleep anyway, so why not have some beautiful dreams while they rest? I agree. This is the home we spent a great deal of effort on to build for ourselves. Yeah, she's right. We're staying here of our own free will. I don't understand this at all, but I just want to spend some more time with my family. I don't want them to be sad. Thank you, dear. Great Dendro Archon, I hope you can understand. You don't need to gather around here, it's all right. The Great Dendro Archon is nothing if not kind and considerate towards her people. She won't interfere with what we're doing here. Uh-oh, now he's playing dirty! It seems like I won't need you to answer my last question. You're willing to tell me all your secrets because you have nothing to fear. If you use real people as your weapon and turn them against their Archon, then there's nothing the Archon can do. They just want to be with the people they cherish. I don't think there's anything wrong with me providing them with that opportunity. They don't wish to eternally part with their spouses and friends. What's so wrong about that? If you understood humans a little better, or had also experienced firsthand the absolute devastation of loss, then perhaps you wouldn't be so cold towards us. If you had used your talents and determination for a just cause, you could have become a sage of the new generation. Unfortunately, you've committed one of the six cardinal sins of the Academia by attempting the forbidden and fearing none. You equated people's feelings with cold Nyana energy and deprived them of the pain that they have to face. You lured them into these dreams and even now remain completely unaware of how evil all of this truly is. Pain? Luring? Those kinds of things haven't existed here from the moment this world was created. She's right here. This is Ilman's child, Haidar. Huh? My daughter? What's wrong with her? This dream relies on a set network, which means that only those with devices planted in their bodies can enter this world. Carefully think back and retrace your steps. I... secretly went back to the mountainside with Hydar. Minar was already there waiting for me, and Hydar was able to see her mother. Ah... Uh, you mean... She isn't actually the real Hydar? No, because unlike you, she can't enter this dream. The moment you came into this dream, it created a Hydar to realize your wish of reuniting with your family. So, tell me, where's the real Hydar? She's still out there on the mountainside. That's right. And she must have been terrified to see her father not in his right mind. Not to mention the monsters in that area. This 
situation is very dangerous. If Hydar's still out there, then... What are you talking about, Dad? I don't understand. I must wake up right now. I can't leave her there alone. Oh. <sighs> it seems the others have also remembered something. People try to avoid pain and stay in their perceived bubbles of safety out of an instinct to protect themselves. This is human nature, but it is also one of their weaknesses. However, why are there still so many people striving to move forward even when they know the path ahead is dangerous and painful? It's because people don't only live for themselves. They have families, loved ones, friends and communities. They have dreams that they are still trying to achieve. But in this dream, you showed them only the most comfortable and soothing things. This entire world has been built on the foundation of buried and unseen pain. It's all just a well-devised scam. It seems like I've stayed in the dream for too long. I still have so many things I haven't done. Huh. <laughs> I thought gods didn't understand humans. That would have explained why they created such a flawed world where countless tragedies took place. I didn't expect you to arrive at the answer through sheer power of observation. But unfortunately, it means nothing now. If you wanted to spend a little time in the waking world, go right ahead. In any case, I wanted to spend some time alone with Amira. As long as this dream continues to exist, you'll come back. Humans aren't as strong as you think. And even if you're a god, they won't always listen to you. It's time to purge all the extraneous data and noise. Ah! Monsters, be careful! All of you, please get out of here and find somewhere safe. I am the master of this dream. I can create endless waves of monsters with the snap of a finger. Don't worry, they'll wake up before they get hurt. Amira doesn't like to see others in pain. If you know what's good for you, leave now! <laughs> you haven't won just yet. This dream is mine! If I go into hiding here, not even an Archon can ever find me. And as long as people yearn for happiness, they will return here and rebuild this paradise! <sighs> hey, Sam! <sighs> what? 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 The dream is spiraling out of control and it's collapsing now! <laughs> <laughs> Amira! 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 <laughs> Amira, are you all right? I don't feel well. <laughs> no, no, no! Please, no! proficient in using the Akasha's technology, and he spent a lot of Nyana energy creating monsters. Now the system is out of control. All the people he created also turned into monsters, including Amira. It's terrible, even for a dream. Even Paimon's freaked out. <sighs> Paimon can't imagine what they're going through. The good news is that the chaos seems to have subsided. Now we only need to wake up the people here and let them return to their real lives. 
Amira. My dear Amira. They're all gone. It was just a big dream after all. I couldn't change my fate. And my knowledge turned out to be useless. What a cruel world. Do you still think this is our fault? I don't care about that anymore. The Nyana energy used to sustain this dream has all been transformed into monsters. This dream will soon collapse in my consciousness along with it. Let me disappear with Amira. I'd rather turn into dust than to ever wake up again. It seems that everything that's happened is too much for him. He's lost all hope. I think seeing Amira turn into a monster was punishment enough for him. After comprehending the hollowness of the unreal, it's time to revisit the meaning of existence. Existence? <laughs> I'm different from the others. I've long given up everything outside of my consciousness. Using my knowledge of the Akasha, I have a way to extract your consciousness from here and put it inside a knowledge capsule. The Academia has probably kept your body, so you should be able to wake up soon. No need. Just let me disappear. Reality means nothing to me now. This isn't compassion. I won't let you escape your punishment by simply disappearing. As for your life after that, it will be up to you how you want to exist. Alright, Traveler and Paimon, we should go back. We can finally wrap up this whole thing. Nothing. Uh, let's tell the people here to gather at a moment of dreams after they wake up. Oh, great! You're awake! Everybody has started to wake up, and we've heard similar reports from around the city as well. From the looks of it, you were able to successfully resolve the issue. Yes, though it took us a good deal of effort. There will be many people gathering here shortly, so please do your best to maintain order. I need to go to the Academia with them now, but we'll be back soon. Are we going to ask about that scholar? Yes, but it may take some time for him to wake up after his consciousness returns to his body. We can leave the rest to the Matra. Oh, it's the great Dendro Archon. How can I help you? I would like to check the registration records of a Kasharawar scholar. He should be in an unconscious state right now. Okay, just a moment. Sorry to keep you waiting, Dendro Archon. We have confirmed that there's a scholar named Benuni who's been unconscious for a while. The cause was improper operation of the Akasha. He hasn't regained consciousness yet and is still receiving treatment at Bimarstan. Huh? Isn't his name Moses? I guess he didn't want to be recognized or bothered by anyone. Please, give the knowledge stored in this to the Matra and ask them to import it into Benuni's brain. Understood. But for safety reasons, I need to know why. It's simple. This contains his consciousness. It's long been trapped inside of a dream. He's committed an act that affected the safety of Sumeru. After he wakes up, I'll inform the General Mahamatra of all the details. I see. I'll take care of this right away. Thank you, Great Dendro Archon. Mm-hmm. No problem. <sighs> all right. Everyone should have gathered at a moment of dreams by now. Let's head back. Let's be quiet and just listen in. I wonder what she's going to say. Hello, all of you who have just woken up. I'm sorry for interrupting your beautiful dreams. 
I may have acted a little cold when handling things in the dream. I sincerely apologize for that. Dreams have amazing power. They inspire us to remain resolute in the face of adversity and help those with aspirations achieve their desires. But dreams also have the potential to exploit people, confuse the senses, and distort the truth. Unfortunately, you are all chosen as prey for an elaborate scheme. As I've said before, I am still learning and cannot fully empathize with the pain of all the loss you've experienced. But just take a good look around you, and you'll see many other people who have had similar experiences. You should be proud that you've been able to gather here and look toward the future together. The path of life is long, and it's hard for us to see the destination. This leads us to ask a lot of difficult questions. What's the meaning of life? What's the purpose of my existence? Why do I keep experiencing pain and loss? Of course, the most comfortable choice is to stop progressing. Give up thinking, and just keep repeating whatever you're already familiar with. Whenever you have such thoughts, just look at the people and things around you. Some people work hard all day so that their families can have a hot meal on the table at night. Some people travel all over the world in order to create art that resonates with all of Tavat. Some venture in search of the world's secrets to prevent rapidly approaching, yet still unknown, world-shattering catastrophes. Life is not just about yourself. Each and every one of your actions shapes you and the world around you. <sighs> Look, friends and family will remember what you've done, and even some people you've never met may benefit from your actions. Therefore, many people will strive forward to forge new paths, even if they have to endure great pain to do so. Once you begin your journey on that same difficult yet rewarding path, You'll come to know the answers to those big existential questions, yet they will no longer feel as life-defining as they did before. But if you were to believe that life is nothing but an empty, ephemeral dream, then that's also the only thing it will ever become. You are free to choose how you want to live your lives, but as your Archon, I should first make this information known to everyone. In the end, it's up to you whether you want to embrace a beautiful dream at the cost of your real life. Nahida said she wanted to speak with us alone. It seems like she went to the plaza in front of the academia. You're amazing, Nahida! Even Paimon was nearly won over by that scholar in that dream. Well, he's very good at manipulating the weaknesses of human nature, but perhaps he himself had fallen prisoner to them long ago. That dream was incredibly beautiful and enticing. Ordinary people couldn't see through it and easily lost themselves within it. But as long as you can still wake up, you can still move forward with your life. Huh? What makes you say that? Right! You said that you didn't understand human feelings, but... We saw how considerate you were with all these people! Your speech just now really connected with everyone! You did a good job! <laughs> Thank you. I've heard a lot of sad stories along this journey, and several of them have touched my heart. You can't say that the victims of the dream really did anything wrong, and what they wanted was also not unreasonable. That's why I could understand them when they tried to resist us and protect the dream. But all of my understanding and stirred feelings probably can't even account for even 1% of the pain they've experienced. I don't think this 1% can be seen as an example of what you call empathy. You're too hard on yourself, that's for sure. <laughs> Alright. I suppose going out into the world will help my confidence grow. I've learned that emotions are nothing like knowledge, and that's why it's hard for me to put them into words sometimes. Benuni, or Mercedes, said that I had never personally felt the pain of loss. But I have a vague feeling that this isn't true. The moment I entered the dream, 
I felt like I was wrapped in a blanket of warm feelings. It was so warm that it felt like I had returned to the start of my life. And I didn't want to wake up anymore. But when I opened my eyes, the feeling was gone without a trace. If I have to make an analogy for it, I would say I can no longer see words on a piece of paper after they have been erased. But I can still see the slight indentations of where the words had been written. But now that I've experienced this dream, I think I can say with confidence that I won't dwell too much on the meaning of that warmth. It's enough that I can tell I was once supported by that warmth, and its existence has allowed me to get to where I am today. If I dwell too much on its exact nature, I would be putting the cart before the horse. I gave a speech to inspire my people, so if I were to fail to live up to those words myself, then that would be too embarrassing. <laughs> Like there's something you want to say. Is there anything you want to tell me? <laughs> okay. Since we just woke up, let's stretch a little bit. A new day is about to begin. <laughs> 